Hello everybody and welcome to Project Zomboid. One hacking intense and unforgiving zombie survival game. And this has been kind of my obsession for the last year, on and off. I've taken some break, but I love this game. So I thought it would be fun to make a series, kind of a let's play slash getting started guide with uh, a bunch of tips for fairly new players about what to pick up, how to fight, how to loot, where to safely build a base or whatever. And um, I'm going to be starting a fresh run, completely vanilla, no mods. Normally I do mod a bunch, but I thought for a starter it might be good to start with zero mods just to get to know the basics of the game. So we're going to do a solo world, as you can see, no mods. And I'm going to go for Apocalypse Preset. To me that kind of feels like the default. It's it's tough, it's not necessarily what I would recommend all the beginners to do, but... Yeah, and we're going to go for West Point. A beginner I would probably recommend Riverside. Personally, you know what, let's do Riverside. I would recommend Riverside for most people to start out with. It is, it has everything you really need and it's uh, it's a good place to be. So I have a preset here. I can run you through the perks, uh, through the traits I have. We have high first, so yeah, we need to drink a lot. Slow healer, we're, you know, gonna try to not get hit. That's kind of the, kind of the goal. Every hit can be your last one. So slow healer is six points, pretty good. Underweight, we can, we can work with that. Conspicuous is essentially three points because it's not fully implemented how that works in the game. Um, apparently, I have pacifist in this, <laughs> so we get less weapon XP, but that's being offset by fast learner. Uh, we're prone to illness. I f think that's basically three points. Smoker. It's not three points, as a lot of people say, but it is very manageable. Weak stomach. Um, any piece of rotten food can kill you. This, I don't think this affects it really. So to me, it's always seemed like at least cheap points. Short-sighted, again, doesn't do all that much. And slow reader. We can fast forward while reading anyways, so that's fine. We have cat's eyes, so we can see at night. Outdoorsman, so we don't get sick from the rain. These are kind of must-haves for me. Wakeful, so we could just stretch our days longer. Fast learner, more XP for everything. Keen hearing lets us see behind us, which is awesome. And stout and athletic, so basically we just start with better combat stats already. We can fight longer and do more damage, which is awesome. And we can carry a bit more. Um... Actually, I'm gonna add Speed Demon. I always thought it was kind of a, a shitty perk in t at first. Because you your car does more makes more noise when you go in reverse, but you also get a bit more power. And I think that makes it easier to drive over grass. So I'm gonna put that to the test. I'm just gonna add a preset. I need a cap. There. That's me! And let's dive in. That's exciting. I haven't started a fresh run in a while, and I haven't started in Riverside, and I haven't done, um, I haven't done a vanilla run in 84 years. So yeah, I'm excited. In the meantime, I'm gonna check if my recording is not still going, because I changed a bunch of software. I think we're good. Hell yeah! This will probably be a. Um, a lightly edited series. You know, if I'm gonna have to sit still to read two books in a row, we could cut that, but most of the stuff I'm gonna show you. Click to start. Sweet. All right. I think I know where we are. One thing, of course, I can uh, teach you is map knowledge. Like, you're gonna get better every run, not just because you're better at combat. Ooh, a saw is really good. It can be tricky to find a saw early game. Always pick up a saw if you can. If you have the space. Gonna drop the bag on the floor. Chicken, fried chicken and fries. Hell yeah, that's some food. We need to bulk up because we are heavy. 
If you hold the mouse here and you do shift scroll, you can easily and be just a little bit quicker about checking the inventory um, the containers. Corn, ham, beef, sweet. I'm gonna leave the, the beef there. We might live here. I do want to keep some food on me in case we have to run. I'm gonna take the tuna because those low white cans don't need a can opener. Is that another bag? Or is that... No, that was the previous bag. Okay, we have a fork and a spoon. Technically they're weapons. They sh they're a shit. But we can stab with them a little bit, so I'll take them. I'm gonna look for other clothes. First thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a sweater and I'm gonna rip it up. Because one of the most important things, of obviously, you need food and water and a weapon. But also, you really want to have some ripped sheets on you. Because those are bandages. If you need to, press H for a quick access to health. See a scratch, right click, use a ripped sheet to wrap it up. Is this a bathroom? And I will take one sheet. Usually there's at least one thing to put a curtain up. So you can you could take all the shit. You could take all the all the curtains as sheets and use them to barricade other window windows. If at a window, you can also press Shift E to close a curtain if there is a curtain. There are so many there's so many little things, little shortcuts, little little things that can make things just a little bit quicker. Shift E, there we go. Now at least they can look in. I'm not too worried about these other rooms. I just want my live living room to be sorta of safe. I'm also gonna take the sheet. There we go, remove curtains. Whoop. I don't need this this door. This this room I mean. Add sheet. Sweet. Oh. Downside being, we never know where a zombie is squeaking. Causing a ruckus. Alright, so the early days I'm gonna be very careful and just mostly stay around my own home. Because we really don't need to take a lot of risks. We might not really have any decent weapons, not even like a frying pan. I'll take your denim shirt. Denim shirt gives a little bit of protection. I'll drop the formal shirt. I also have a tank top I don't need. I usually start with some extra clothing and a t-shirt. Just so I have some stuff to rip up for sheets. Because you never know if you need them. So early games you really don't have to take too much of a risk typically. You often will start with a bit of food. If you're lucky you'll have a weapon. If you're not as lucky just try to push them over and stomp on their face. Oh sweet perfect leather jacket. That's not bad. I'm gonna try to preserve my weapons as much as I can. Until I at least have a weapon or something. If you do get more than three zombies at you, it's probably not gonna be a great idea to uh, to try and push them all over. Because one will get up as the other one falls, it's really a pain. You can try to use these fences, but... Oh. It can get a little wonky and sketchy in general to use uh, fences for combat. I don't recommend it. I'll take the pencil and I'm definitely gonna get a watch because now duh, I know the time, but also the date and the temperature. Honestly, you don't have to worry too much about the temperature in a normal run like this, but... Yeah, so for these early days, I'm just slowly whittling my way through the zombies and expanding the area that it's safe. And hope to find at least a frying pan in one of the kitchens. 
but ideally hammer, screwdriver, saw, uh, pipes maybe. Uh, I mean, crowbar would be awesome, but... Now, if you're not sure if there's one or more zombies behind the door, tap tap. Quickly press E twice and you should be safe. Of course, you might aggro four zombies behind there and they'll quickly bust down the door. Nothing is 100% safe, but... Just try to make it reasonably safe. Oh, shit. It's duct tape, that's great. We can fix up certain weapons. Duct tape isn't an absolute must. But I like to hoard that shit because you can fix up... Um, Machetes with them. Machetes are rare enough as they are, so... Alright, we're gonna take an empty kettle, because we can put water in there. We're gonna put the saucepan on our back. That's awesome. Ice cream, just gobble that shit down, because we are pretty low when it comes to... Uh, we're quite underweight. Oh, look at that, a can opener, sweet. Obviously, you need those to open cans. I just blew your mind, right? Uh, cereal, chocolate, peanut butter, tea bag. Tea bag will help us stay awake longer. If we have to fight, is this safe to eat? Yes, it'll make us unhappy, but fuck it, we're just gonna eat, because that's another weapon. And take that fork, another shitty weapon. I'm gonna fill just the empty kettle. If you do fill all, you're gonna fill the saucepans, then they don't work as a weapon. It's a, it's a bit of a thing. Also, just click the radio. I'm gonna right-click the battery. Because I want the battery to take it out. And then... Um, I'm gonna switch to the saucepan, it's a better weapon. Because at some point we might have to fight at night, and then having a battery is... Um, having a flashlight, actually, would be really helpful on those take batteries. I'm gonna drop a bit of food here. I'll come back. I'm gonna favor the tea bag. Because at some point tonight we're gonna get tired. And when you get tired, you do less damage. Your perception is worse. Stay away from the lunge. Well, that's a good demonstration of how you're not... Of how I wasn't careful enough there. That could trip you. That could kill you. Death is... Uh, death is everywhere. Now will probably be a good time to show you. One setting you should change if you're new to this game. Oh, it's a black digital watch. Like more than a red one, just aesthetics. So one thing that really helps... I don't know if it makes the game easier, it definitely feels a lot safer to fight. If you go to uh, settings, to options... Now in the first window display you have this option this drop down menu aim outline ranged weapons we're gonna set it to any weapon and i'm quickly gonna check if this setting is still uh, as it should be actually we're also gonna go to accessibility and we're gonna check leave key in ignition this is basically a must if you plan to play a multiplayer at some point and, um, what's the other one? <laughs> Resume normal speed when timed actions are complete. This is just great, because you can do a slow action, something that takes a while. And you could press F4 or F5 or these little arrows at the top to fast forward. And then when it's done, it automatically goes back to normal speed, so you don't waste a whole bunch of time. And time is just one of more resources that is very valuable. 
And see, now that we changed that setting, we can easily see who we're aiming at if we're actually close enough to hit them. It is great. Oh, that's a letter opener. That's a really shitty knife, but it is a knife. And knives are low-key one of the best weapon types because they don't use a lot of stamina. Just gonna back away slowly from those guys. And I'm gonna sneak. Now earlier I did walk you through all the traits I have, but I didn't really spend much time talking about professions because I just kind of forgot, honestly. Uh, I'm a burglar. So I start with two skills, two stats, two levels of light-footed nimble and sneaking. So when in combat stance, I just move faster. Also, oh god, bye. <laughs> I was going to show on this window, but it's already busted. <laughs> um, when I try to open a window, I have a smaller chance of the window locking up and it's stopping. Now I'll show you how to open a window in different ways. So if it's intact, you really want to, you have to have a weapon in your hand for this, but you can smash open a window. If you don't have a weapon in your hands and, you know, active, then you're going to use your elbow and probably going to get yourself scratched. But if you have a weapon, you can do right click, smash the window, right click, remove broken glass, long press E and you to climb through. Homes are honestly the sketchiest place in the game, probably. Two cans of food. You can hold control to select multiple things. A rolling pin is a weapon, but it's a little bit shit. It was in, gr in horrible condition. Oh shit, 20 cigarettes, that's awesome. A jar is a rare find, but don't need it right now. I guess I'll take spoons, because we're really low on weapons. I'm gonna check the fridge. Avocado and carrots. Sure thing. And I'm gonna leave the meat. I will, though, take the bread knife. It's kind of shit. And the marmalade and the peanut butter. I just mostly really want that fatty food. I will take sleeping tablets. They'll, you know, they do what you would expect. And oh, this is just a cooler leather jacket than the one I have. <laughs> and I I am vain. Actually, this jacket also is longer, so it protects more of your body. But that's it. I always check the wardrobes for leather jackets, for leather gloves, and for backpacks. Because, you know, backpacks are great. And I always check the walk-in closet because they might have weapons and tools. And wow, this one's completely empty, huh? All right. Clearly there's a radio on. Supposedly attracts zombies. I'm usually not too worried about it. It probably does. It's probably correct. This is a bit of a group. I would feel a lot more comfortable if I had some weapons. Where's my pile of shit? There's my pile of shit. You can drag things out of your inventory as you're walking. As long as it's your, it's your main inventory. From your backpack you can do it. So sometimes I'll do that to uh, make myself a bit lighter. If you're carrying too much you do less damage. It wouldn't be too much of an issue, but... Some of that stuff needed to go onto the pile anyways. Oh shit. Well. I guess we're using the fork for a little bit. I don't actually ever use the... Well, yeah, that's that just lasts for, for, for three stabs, huh? I will take... The saucepan realized I have a screwdriver. Screwdrivers are actually okay. They count as knives, as short blade, as the game would call it. 
The short blade doesn't make you uh, exert it quickly. It doesn't take a lot of stamina. Oh shit. Crawlers are deaf. Crawlers will mess you up. Crawlers will try to scratch your ankles and stuff. They're really sketchy. Alright, just scrolling through whatever they have, hoping for some weapons, but usually you can kind of tell what they have. Butter knife. That's about as bad as it gets. Alright. You can also, you can find weapons what you're carrying all the way at the bottom, you can also find it here, you can right click, attach it to your back. If it's attached to your back, you can kind of see it from the bottom hotbar here. You can press 1 for quick access to your weapon. It's really useful, so we'll do that. And I'll take a screwdriver, attach to belt left. That's now on position 2. Just to demonstrate, leather opener, belt right, that's in position 3. Later you can get more slots with a holster for instance, you could put a gun on your hotbar, it's really nice, but... For now, for a while, we're not really gonna worry about guns. Some people think, oh, zombie game, let's shoot them all. And it's, it's a valid strategy, but it's typically better to learn the basics without guns first. Okay, I'm gonna press M to open the map. We don't, can't see too much of the map. I'm gonna press F2, you can see the game is paused. Now we can get snuck up on. Because we have a pencil or a pen, I don't remember, we can um, make markings also when it's paused. So this is where we started. I've looted this and this. I don't think I've looted this. I'm gonna have a look. Press F2, M, get back out. Now it can, you can get lucky. You can find a uh, backpack in uh, on a zombie or um, I hear something um, or just in a home very quickly but if not the best bet is probably to get a garbage bag you can equip it secondary now it's in your left hand you can only combine it with a one-handed weapon but early game that's probably what you're gonna be using anyways if you get a crowbar you probably want to use that crowbar because it lasts a while It's always good practice to scout out a home first, see what's oh good. see what's uh, what's going on inside. I typically barge inside because I'm like, eh, I'll deal with it. Don't recommend it though. One of those do as I say, not as I do situations. <laughs> Alright, just tap on E to open a window. Hold E to go in. Oh. And. From the inside you can always open a door, a normal door at least. There's definitely a zombie inside, we're probably in one of the doors, so we're gonna do a door flash. That one's good. Quick peek here, flip flops and a saw. What window did they break? I'm also keeping an eye out for books. Early game, I typically really only care about uh, about the carpentry books. Oh, hi there. I guess that window... That window there is probably where they came inside. As you can see, I try to stab and smash as little as possible early game. Is that... that's a butter knife. But that's two frying pans. I'm gonna put one on my back. And a griddle pan. And another saucepan. That is actually really good. Yep. You can use shift and control to select multiple things. Just, just like in the Fallout Explorer. It's really nice. I'm gonna eat some fried chicken. Fast forward. Fried chicken. Now we're full. All right. Just gonna favorite a couple things that I never want to get off my inventory. Get out. Like water, saw, screwdriver. 
smokes, pencil, tea bag, stuff like that. I like to keep everything on me. That's just how I play. I don't necessarily... Like some people would put a can opener with the cans. Fair enough. But I always like the option to be able to run away and have all the essentials with me. Like, I'll know, I could just go to a different home. And uh, I'm also gonna bring another garbage bag, by the way. Um, be able to run out of town, go to a random farm home, and I'll have a can opener and a hammer and the screwdriver so I can take apart some furniture, use that wood to barricade the place, hopefully, open some cans of food. You know, I like to be always ready to go on the run, because, you know, it's a zombie apocalypse, shit can happen. <laughs> now, the next home we go to, there might be a house alarm. And if that happens, zombies can hear it over a range of 600 of these tiles. That is like half the town, it's nuts. Not every single zombie will actually come. But then it's like, okay, then we're just gonna, gonna lag it. Again, this is probably not the safest way to approach this. Oh. That's a pile of dead zombies, lady? What have you been up to? Oh shit, one of them rose up. Well, that's kind of perfect for demonstration purposes. Not every dead zombie is a dead zombie. I mean, they're all undead, but you know what I mean. Like, if it seems to be extra dead, proper dead, <laughs> there is always a chance that it's gonna just get up the moment you walk past. And it'll happen when you don't expect it, because that chance is stupid low. It is not... Honestly, you typically... You have to know it's a thing. But typically I don't even think about it, because it is such a rare thing. And that's how it's gonna catch you off guard sometime. Like it did with me. Hmm, this is another good thing to know. You have a key ring. It works kind of like a bag. It is a container. And you can drag a key to the key ring. Now you have a key of the home. Because keys always spawn on the corpse inside the home. And it'll be the key to the home you find it in. This is another great little detail of the game. You can click a container or scroll through this to match to uh, to select it. Sometimes you'll find these hidden compartments. And you're like, wh where is this thing? Is actually these stripes on the floor glowing up? That's a hidden compartment. And in this case, it has 13 money. It might have some tools. It might have, you know, it could be all sorts of things. It's great. I have only found a couple of those ever. So it's really nice that the zombie rising up and that, that um, hidden compartment that those show up now. That is really convenient. <laughs> it's almost like I script this. Nah. I wouldn't even know how. All right. Um, we've got a lot of food out of this. Oh. I don't think. Please give me a hammer, something. I'll take the duct tape. Normally, often I'll also take the rope, because a rope will help you transport wood, but you have to make choices. I'm gonna leave it behind. gonna start a fresh pile. I'm not sure yet where I'm gonna live. So I'm just gonna place pineapple, some of this stuff that can't spoil. If it doesn't say fresh or stale or whatever, it probably can't spoil. I 
We don't need every single pan on us. Their spoons are kind of shit. Can't use a battery anyways. I do want to keep the sleeping tablets on me. If we get a messy sleep schedule, we can fix it that way. All these cans of food are going to go. Also the cereal. I'm going to press F4. As long as we're not tired, we can see all this way behind us. And it should be safe to fast forward. Because if a zombie does show up, our character will, will startle and uh, automatically fast forward. It goes back to normal time. It's one of those things. There's always a bit of risk to it though, but... In general, I'd say use it sparingly. Duct tape and saw. Man, that sound, that woodpecker, always sounds like a clicker to me. We do have a corpse inside. So I'm gonna right click, grab corpse. It takes up both our hands, so our bag is now no longer in our hand. I'm gonna go outside, drop the corpse. We're also super heavy, it takes a lot of energy to do this. But it's better not to have zombies in your home. If you're too much around zombies, and really one zombie in your home really isn't something to get too worried about as long as it's not in your bedroom but um, if you have too many zombies in your homes uh, home you might get corpse sickness and that can also turn you into a zombie eventually it'll it'll warn you though you'll get queasy then you'll get nauseous it's then sick it's typically not too bad I'm gonna re-equip the bag in my secondary and yeah I think I'm just gonna bulk up I'm gonna eat a bunch I'm gonna eat the fries because it's kind of like real life if you want to gain more weight and we should really gain more weight we're 70 kilograms you want to be 75 and up if you want to gain more weight you eat meat and fish fries um, not necessarily a can of peas, you know? Chocolate will do. It's 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 not perfect, the nutrition system. It's not super realistic, but they made a really good effort. And it's very... It's kind of intuitive. Corned beef, tu canned tuna, chocolate, sweets. You know, if it's fatty in real life, it'll do. Also gonna eat the corn, just because I don't want it to go to waste. And yeah, I don't I kinda don't want to take too many more risks today before I get sleepy, which should happen in not too long. But I I don't know. We're not drowsy yet. We don't have booze to help us get drowsy. Just kill a couple more zombies, make the street a little bit safer. Get away from the zombie. It'll lunge at you, it'll trip you. It is really typically not worth the risk. If you're dealing with sprinter zombies, you might have to, but don't do that to yourself. <laughs> I would love to check out that shed, but I just know there are going to be more zombies here. More zombies than I want to deal with right now. If you're not over encumbered, you can run to hop a fence. Typically I would always recommend just walking up to it while tap 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 pressing E. It's always safer because you could trip, you can get a scratch in your foot, you're gonna be hobbling very slowly. It's gonna be a bad time, zombies, it might be really hard to lose zombies. Now I did find a van. And one other perk of being a burglar is we could hotwire this, assuming it has fuel. 
Holding my mouse over the gas tank tells me out of gas, zero out of 31 units of fuel, so nothing. The battery has, as long as the condition is more than 10, I mean, ideally a bit, a bit above, more than 12 or so, and remaining is also over 12, it should be able to start, the engine is good, the hood is good. So yeah, this is a really nice car, it would just need some fuel. We can use a jerry can or a water bottle. It's locked though. It's a real shame. Let's check out the back. There could be weapons in the back. Just a tarp. Alright. Now what you can do is press V and you get a context menu like this dial and you could do smash front right window but you're gonna be really hacking sure you have a, a weapon in your hand because you know you may have been carrying stuff you may have unequipped it without knowing and then you'll smash the window with your elbow but in this case it was fine we smashed it with a weapon i use z or z to open this menu i press one to go to the driver's seat, you can click it or press it on the keyboard. This button will unlock the doors. This will unlock the back. Now we can check the glove box. Twine is good. We'll get to that later, but it's good to have. And alcohol wipes, let's disinfect wounds, I'll take it. I typically don't really don't care about wound infection. There is a, a big difference. Is that a zombie with a backpack? I think it is, or at least some bag, a satchel. Um, it should be able to work for the couch, but that is huge. That is really nice. Typically, I would say don't fight inside. You're gonna get stuck on the couch, you're gonna get stuck on the window. Zombies will be hiding right behind this corner. Just take them outside. I usually, if I have them on the ground like this, I'll stand here. Because I'm way more likely to hit the head hitbox. It has... We'll get to that. Hitboxes are a whole thing. On the ground, zombies work a bit differently. Not important right now. Okay, so we have a satchel, which is awesome. We're gonna do right-click, equip on back. And sweet. This will give us a bit of weight reduction. So we're gonna take all the heavy shit, just gonna do Ctrl A, and drag all of that to the satchel. And you can walk while it's doing this, but if you run, it interrupts. Sometimes you do kinda get stuck. It's really jank, it's a bit of a buggy thing. Inventory management, yeah, it's just something 99 out of 100 times it works. Sometimes you get a little stuck. Might be just me though. Alright. I didn't mention the garbage bags. I always try to collect at least four of them. So we can make a water collector at some point. If this is your first time playing, don't worry about it. It's, um, it's great to be able to collect water. But you might have water coming out of the tap for the first, you know, days, weeks. By default, it should automatically go off anywhere between 1 and 30 or 28 days, something like that. So, statistically, you're likely to have two weeks of water. And you can always just get water from the neighbors. Before you uh, exhaust water from the whole neighborhood, you're probably... Yeah, that's not too likely to happen. So, it's getting late. We're gonna get sleepy soon enough anyways. We're just gonna sleep. At least we know it's pretty safe now. Zombies could be crashing through the windows, but as long as they... I haven't aggroed any zombies nearby that I haven't killed. So, yeah, there really is no incentive for any of them to do that. We did wake up stupid early, so that's going to be a bit of an issue tomorrow. Or, I mean, today, late at night, but... Yeah. 
we'll deal with that later. So we have a frying pan on us. We have two pans in our back and I will take the other two saucepans actually. We have more space now and um, I'm just gonna go through today too. And today we could take a little bit more risk. I don't wanna get too risky, but um, I do happen to know this is kind of the main street, the shopping street of Riverside. And there is a sports supply store here. There is also a hardware store. Somewhere around here, I think. The shopping area goes here and then at some point it goes around the corner and there's another shopping street. There is a hardware store. It's usually busy there. But we might be able to sneak into the sports supply store and get a baseball bat. I don't think I ever mentioned, you could press C to crouch. You'll be a bit less likely to be spotted. You make less noise. You're maybe also less likely to be spotted visually, but stealth really isn't a big thing in this game. Well, visually it's not. Hmm. It definitely helps not to make a lot of noise. That is a huge thing in this game. So in that sense, there is stealth. But making yourself less visible is not really a thing. Alright, since it is so quiet, I am going to sneak inside. Normally I'd say make sure the area is clear. You can also attack a window like this. It's not always effective. I'm just going to smash a window. Remove broken glass. I'm gonna make sure there's no zombies approaching. If you're standing here and there's a zombie here, you won't see it. Even these very open looking trees will hide zombies from you. Zombies? I mean, trees are the sketchy shit in the game. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna sneak through here. There are helmets here. We should probably take a helmet. It is pretty good protection actually. You know what? I'm vain, so I'm gonna check to see if they have a hockey helmet. Badminton racket is a weapon. Hockey helmet, let's go. Hockey stick is actually a pretty good weapon, I think. I don't know if it lasts long, but... Four baseball bats. They don't last as long as crowbars, but they are a long blunt weapon. And that is actually a really good find. I don't know how many you'll usually find in this place. Ice hockey sticks. I don't think they last too long. I don't want to get all... Filled up. Man, that's, that took a while before I could see inside. That's a little scary. I'm definitely going to take an empty bucket. Buckets are great. Later, if we're going to do farming, buckets are a good way to uh, do the watering. There might be a storeroom out back. Yes, there is. Football, soccer ball. I'm going to go through this really quickly. Three more baseball bats. I'm going to go fast forward. And I'm going to get the heck out of here. This was a little bit risky. Because the whole, we didn't clear the whole area, but because it's early, because I know I can run away, I was too sketched out. Now we have a very heavy load. Here you can see, by the way, at the inventory, at the top it'll say 24, let's say 25 out of 15. We're 10 overweight, we're going to be much more likely to trip over these fences if we run. We're going to be shitty in combat, we're going to get tired, exerted. If you do this too long. So I'm just going to quickly hobble home. Don't do this for too long. I'm going to right click the garbage bag and just drop it. There. That's a whole lot of weight off my back. 
If you're carrying too much, try to have it in the bag that you could just right click drop. Or you could do it from your inventory here. You could just be like, whoop, drop. Drag it out. Sweet. I'm gonna put all this, just drag it from the bag to the ground. And I'm gonna check how many. How many baseball bats we have. I'm gonna drop my other weapons. I will keep the screwdriver. All the shitty weapons can go. We have five bats on the ground and I still have two on me. Perfect. I'm gonna attach one to the back. Drop the hockey stick, twine, duct tape. Keep a bit of food on me. Gonna put the garbage bag in the other garbage bag. So we don't get a whole bunch of them. Sweet. Hell yes. We do get XP for different weapon types. Uh, long blunt is uh, the baseball bat and the crowbar. Short blunt is a hammer or uh, the bands we've used. There's axe, blades, short and long, spear, maintenance. Maintenance is something that as it progresses, it'll help us uh, use our weapons longer. So something like a, a baseball bat is not, it doesn't last very long, but it's pretty decent. It could definitely be a lot worse. Right, let's have a snack. Let's also have a banana and just savor that delicious sound. Just, mm. <laughs> I know, it bothers the crap out of some people. I don't know why. I, it's, it's always just seemed, okay, it's squishy. But some people, uh, some people really dislike the banana sound. Sometimes they'll be like, hey, eat a banana and listen. Just because it gets people, uh, you know. Usually makes people go, ew. So today, I would really like to get my hands on a lighter. I found some smokes yesterday. Um, we are definitely getting anxious. Because we haven't smoked. There's slight panic, that's from zombies. There's agitated, first anxious, then agitated. That's from not smoking or from zombie infection. This guy is just not smoking. And that's uh, eventually gonna lead to depression. And depression will, um, will make you move slower. Not like you walk slower, but switching to a different weapon will be slower. Or turning around in combat, like this, makes you slower. It's just, it's not too dangerous, but it can be, make combat feel a little bit more scary. So today I'm just gonna try to kill as many zombies as I can. Ooh, check out a bunch of cars. Glove boxes can have smokes and lighters, matches. Zombies can be carrying them. Typically zombies don't have too much loot, but... There's not too much you can get from zombies, but... Smokes and lights. Smokes and fire, I mean. You never know. Certain clothing items can of course be found as zombies. It still startles me sometimes. The light just goes off around 5 a.m. Uh, 5 in the morning. Yeah, 5 a.m. And uh, just that sudden darkness. Like, oh shit. <laughs> this, this game always keeps you uh, a little bit on edge. Okay, not finding too much on the zombies. I think fire and matches... I mean... Matches, lighters and smokes can also be found in kitchens, but... I don't want to go through too many homes right now. This game, by the way, has uh, random events. Every house has a chance to spawn something interesting. It can be a couple zombies on the ground, 
that have a bit of storytelling around them, like there might be a gun. Uh, it can be a house that's set on fire. However it happened, we don't know. But it's you, you should, uh, you're likely to find a couple homes on, uh, that have been on fire in your town. What's good about that is often, typically, you'll also find a fire truck. It could have some goodies, like fire axes. It can also have firefighter clothing, which is very protective. Okay. Bat attached, bat equipped. I'm gonna smash a window, hop in. Driver's side, open all the locks. A one pack of matches, that's pretty awesome. We also have an annotated map, West Point map, Louisville map, that's really good. We're gonna check those later. I'm gonna hop out because I heard something. Check the pack. Oh, we have an axe. It's in really poor shape, you see the condition? Only a sliver. But we could cut some trees, we can saw them up. We don't have a hammer or nails, so we can't do too much with them. Also, military boots. These offer a bit of protection against crawling zombies that all try to attach, attack your feet. Don't forget to drop your shoes, shoes are heavy. And also, if we have to stomp on a zombie's head, we do more damage. That's really good. Couple more maps. We'll take the twine and the paper clip because it lets us make fishing rods at some point, probably later if we... Yeah. It's not something of too much concern, but I like to bring it. Martridge map. I'll just take all the maps. I feel like these wrecked cars have a bit better chance of being unlocked, but don't hold me to that. Might just be me in my imagination. Duct tape. You can, if you get a cold because you've been outside in the rain too much, you can use toilet paper to equip it in your right hand and muffle any coughs. Doesn't last long though. I'm probably bombarding you all with information, but... Maybe you can uh, play this game a couple times and come back if it's like too much information or, you know. I hope it's helpful. I'm having always fun uh, playing this game anyways. So putting some information together like this was uh, kind of a no-brainer. I have played this game about 1700 hours and spent just as much uh, watching this game on Twitch. And I'm trying to figure out these, these sort of hidden game mechanics, how little things work, little details. I just, I just want to inhale this world. I want to learn more about it, about this world and this game, find little hidden little easter eggs, little details on the map. It's so in-depth, this game. There are so many mechanics that hopefully we'll get to at some point, like how fishing works and the little details, the little nuances. It's, um... It may have been a bit of an unhealthy obsession. <laughs> I spent way too much time on this, but also... Ooh, metal bar is a good weapon. But also, uh, I've met a lot of really awesome people through playing this game. <sighs> Screwdriver, hand torch, hell yes. We're gonna grab this. And I'm gonna favorite this. I always wanna have this on me. I'm also gonna take the empty gas can. And the light bulbs, because light bulbs, they burn out. It's a whole thing, we'll get to that eventually. You don't really have to think about that. Your first runs, you're probably gonna not gonna live for months. No offense, but... Statistically, it's not that likely, so you don't have to think about those things. So, if I have an empty container, preferably an empty gas can, but an empty bottle works too. I like to go to cars, and if there is gas in it, it'll there will be a little icon that shows me I can siphon this one. Sweet. So I'm going to click that. I'm going to hopefully fill up this uh, gas can. 
And you can kind of tell by how long it takes, how full it gets. Also, you can mouse over here. Maybe? No. Where can I mouse over on it then? That's weird. Well, unequip it, I guess. Gas can, there we go. It is about 40% full. I'm just gonna go to this one. Can get a bit more out of it. You can also go to the little menu where you can see all sorts of details about the cars, but I think we're gonna fill up the rest of the jerry can. Yep. In that case, V menu, little gear thingy will open this menu. It's in really poor condition, that's typically the case. There is still quite a bit of fuel in here. Most of the tank is full. That is really good. Most vehicles will be in shit condition, most vehicles will have no fuel. And if they have fuel, it's typically not too much. So uh, the RNG has really been uh, giving us their blessing, I guess. I'm just quickly gonna drop that, because it does get a little heavy. Freeze up a second hand. Smash. So I would recommend always having your, assuming you have normal, de uh, the default controls, always having your thumb on the spacebar, because you might at some point you might you might whiff, you might just miss, be aiming a bit too low. It's very easy to do, and then you can spam the spacebar. You could probably hear that, and then at least you can push them away and get another chance. And yes, I'm standing all the way here to hopefully to do more damage. All right, let's get back to the van. I always like to be very mobile in this game. I love to have a van ready at least to get the heck out of here if I trigger a house alarm or something stupid. So for me, a van is always high on the list. You. I don't like having to stand here to fill it up. There could be a zombie sneaking around this corner, but we'll keep an eye out. I will hop in. So yeah, I'm not saying car is the highest priority, or it should be, but for me, it kind of is. Empty gas can, put it in our bag. I just like to be very mobile and move around a bunch. Go go drive somewhere, loot it as soon as quick as I can, get out. It's not necessarily the safest method, but you know, it's it's been fun for me. So if you want to take this car, typically there's no key in the ignition. Hopefully you can find one in the glove box, put it on your key ring, click click this to put it in and start the car by pressing W or N. But in this case, we have to hotwire it. Thankfully, we could just press V, get this menu, click hotwire, because we are a burglar. Burglars have a chance to hotwire. Sometimes I'll have to do it like 10 times in a row, but this time it went pretty quickly. And look at that, we have a working vehicle. I even like the color, it's pretty awesome. I'm just gonna park it, oh shit. Because I have Speed Demon, it is extremely loud in reverse. And the van's already way louder. This van here can be heard probably all the way by a zombie here-ish. Well, maybe not that far, but far. And it doesn't sound that loud, but it is loud. If you can find a sedan, a little hatchback, a little city car, something that looks like a civilian car, um, I'd probably recommend that. It is way more stealthy. But I like... Uh, I like big car. Because it holds more stuff. This one holds 71 weight in the back. We can repair the trunk so it can go all the way up to 110 or 130. Something like that. Alright. I'm gonna drop some stuff at home. We're actually in a really good shape. I'm gonna put some more stuff down. Stuff we don't really need real soon. I'm gonna drop the alcohol wipes. I can't be bothered to carry those. I'm gonna eat some ham. 
I'm gonna read these maps. I'm gonna fast forward real quick. And I'll show you how the maps work. It's really nice. Uh, you could just do a double click or right click and read map. And you can see the map. That's really awesome. Okay, now we can close it. And now we can get rid of it. And now if you open the map, you can see, we can zoom out and we can see that's West Point A. So if we ever go there, it is going to be way easier to navigate it. And uh, so I'm hoping to find the Riverside map soon. I don't know this place too well. It was lucky that we spawned in so close to the, to this little shopping center. I've spawned here before, that's why I knew, but most places, I, I'm not too familiar with Riverside. I should be. I have a community server where um, where the base is there. We also have a map for March Ridge. Louisville comes in chunks. I think there's 16 maps for Louisville. So we're just gonna read all of those as we find it. And annotated maps can be any city. This one is for Rosewood. And it'll show us something interesting. Like there's a crosshair on this home. Maybe that means there's a bunch of guns. And there's another one. Riverside. Hey, that's really awesome. And oh shit. This is really useful. So I just pointed at this shopping center. And this is our home. And this shows us there's another little shopping center here. with a video store, restaurant. Um, apparently there's booze here, which is actually pretty useful because booze is just a lot of calories. Pill probably means medical something, and I'm not actually sure what this lightning bolt is. Makes me think of power, but I'm not sure if there's if there will be a generator or it's. Um, I should know. I've been there quite a few times, but I just can't remember. So yeah, that's pretty awesome. Okay, we're gonna fill up our kettle. I'm finally gonna have a smoke. I forgot I have I have lights. So we're gonna go to our cigarettes. I always like to keep some on me. You need one or two a day, probably one a day. And I just did right click a smoke. Doesn't always work. It should take it out of your inventory. I'll try it again. It's just a little glitchy. It's no biggie. So I have a smoke, it should fix our agitated instantly. And it actually got rid of our sadness too. Might just be coincidence though, maybe just went away by its own. Dog food is something that you can eat for sure. It does make you a little bit sad though, so that's a bit of a shame. All right, so since we're so close, actually, let's first open the map. If uh, if all is well, it should have added the Riverside area to our map. So that's pretty awesome. And I'm going to close it and we're going to check out that, that little shopping center there. It should have a bunch of goodies for us. Honestly, there is no need to take any big risks here. If it's too busy, we're just going to go back. We have food for more than a day. We have water. We have a car. It's something that took me a long time to, to learn is to remind myself that there's no need to take silly risks. The goal is to live, right? So if you know you have food for more than a day and water and power or whatever, power isn't even necessary to live. But if you have everything you really, really need to live, why take silly chances? Wow, I'm just realizing it's almost noon and I'll completely forget about a television. So yeah. Change of plans. <laughs> We're gonna kill these and if we can... Get back home. As you can see, if you just move backwards... It helps space out the zombies a little bit. Get more time between the swings. There. 
We are getting a little bit unpleasantly hot. That will slow us down a little bit. So I would always recommend not wearing too much. My torso, I have a denim shirt and a leather jacket. And that's already plenty. Then we have jeans and military boots, socks. That should be good. So this is a good time to tell you about television. Television is a great way to get some XP early on. Uh, you can just click it to open this menu, turn it on. I like to turn down the volume because zombies can probably hear it. I'm gonna choose Life and Living TV. This is where all the educational television is. You can also check other channels for news broadcasts about the about the whole Nox event, about the outbreak. It's really good. Uh, it's really entertaining because it gives you a bunch of lore, but I, I've actually only read the scripts online and I always leave it on this channel. So there's less chance of me missing TV. Just gonna sit on the ground. Wait for a tiny bit for TV to begin. We actually timed this kind of perfectly. Eat a carrot. And uh, yeah, TV starts. Uh, we have about, I think, nine days of television. And every day, except one, I think. At noon, there's Woodcraft. Woodcraft is great because it gives you a bit of carpentry XP. Which allows you to build structures and be more effective at it. So it's really good. I always try to get catch the noon show. And the rest of the day I'm usually out looting, fighting, whatever I want to do. So yeah, we'll just... Uh, I'm actually just going to go fast forward. And this is an ad at the end. Sweet! So that got us one level of carpentry. That's awesome. Ideally, it would be great if you could find Carpentry 1, read that before the first show. If you want to be super efficient, but early, you know, you try to get the bits of XP you can. But sometimes you just have to deal with zombies, you know. So I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna run to the store. By the way, there's two ways to run. You could do Shift for a normal run or Alt for a sprint. Alt is risky. If you hit a zombie, you'll trip, you'll tear open, your pants probably start bleeding, stuff like that. It's really not worth it. One more thing I do want to mention. A lot of people will recommend different cities as a starter city. And I feel really strong about Riverside. People will say Rosewood is the best beginner city and it is a good place but it can to me and some of my friends it always feel, feels deceptively sketchy and um, Moldra is honestly a little spicy West Point Z Wars Louisville is not a starter city in the base game you need a mod to start there and I wouldn't recommend it till you get a bit better. It's not as bad as people say, but also it's a little spicy. But yeah, Riverside is just, apart from, you know, areas like these, it feels like double as chill as any other option. There's nice, there's a nice bit of space between homes where you can lose zombies and stuff. There's room to fight. It is honestly pretty great. So you're fighting, I can give you a couple tips. Like, you know, obviously walk back in between swinging. Um, hold shift before you let go of right click to start running. So you, when holding shift you're a bit quicker on the turnaround. Stuff like that, but it's just gonna... You're gonna die. You're gonna die a bunch. That's kind of the game. I, it might not seem that difficult now, but if your first 10 times you don't live for two days, there is zero... Yeah, that's just... 
You will, you will trip, you will bump into a car, get stuck on the corner, get munched on, stuff like that. So I try to take a bit more space around the car. You're gonna trip on the fence, scratch your knee, be too slow to get away from them, get munched on. Benches have killed me quite a few times. You will get stuck on the corner sometimes. I don't know why, sometimes you do, sometimes you don't. I try to avoid them. And you just have to learn to... Uh, what? How many zombies are too many zombies for you? You could try to zigzag through the homes to get away from them. That's actually really effective. You know what? Maybe I'll, maybe I'll demonstrate that real quick. Then we'll see if we can uh, at least check out what these stores have for us. Man. And this is where, starting as a burglar with level 2 nimble, really shines. Because you could just walk backwards faster. So you can get more hits in before you have to turn around. It's nimble is one of the best combat stats in my opinion. It's a little subjective because there's different, different ways of playing and all that stuff. It's not like black and white, it's not... So, oh, this is the best way to go about it. Like so many games. There's strategies, there's... Yeah, play styles. But a lot of people really like Nimble. Another tip I can give you. Fighting left to right on screen is a lot less sketchy than up and down. Like here, aiming at the right the right zombie when they're right above you is really sketchy, but sideways, it's way more clear to see what's going on. And just use that space bar. Feel like they're getting too close, push them away. And try to minimize running. Running is a waste of energy. I'm do I'm being a bit too runny myself, but You can use trees to get away from them, but it's not as effective as you'd hope. Another reason to fight little groups is uh, you get panic when you get too close to a lot of zombies. That incre decreases your accuracy, it says. I think it just boils down to you do less damage. I guess the idea is there's probably a mechanic. Oh, trees are sketchy. Trees will hide so many zombies. Try to avoid them in combat. <laughs> um, the idea is probably less accuracy means you're less likely to do a good hit. You'll hit them, but a bit weaker. You don't hit the vital parts. But yeah, just going around this home, then around this home. I lost a lot of zombies because they're pathfinding. They just lost their line of sight. That's really nice. There's a ranger. They can have... Ooh, a holster. Definitely taking that holster. Rangers can have a couple bullets. Don't think they should have a weapon typically, but you know, you know. Schmack. Schmack. Another thing I would say is when you push a bunch of zombies, don't don't walk into them when you push. That gets really sketchy. Pushing while going backwards is safer, pushing when standing still is okay, but moving into them while pushing, it gets really hairy. Sometimes you kind of push past them a little bit, and then you're right on top of them, and then you don't know in which way you have to aim to hit them. It's hard to explain, but... Well, in the end I've out most of the zombies. 
If I would have just kept moving up, I probably would have lost them, but... I don't mind dealing with them anyways. It was more to demonstrate, you can definitely lose zombies. <laughs> uh, just by going zigzagging around homes. They'll probably wreck a few windows, so I try not to do it with my base. Trying to keep my zombies, uh, keep my base nice and clean, nice and intact, especially. We're getting a little bit winded, but that's okay. We're almost done. Is that home or is no home? Is one further up? These zombies, if they're crawling, they'll just usually get stuck on one thing. Wreck them like this. It's probably the, uh, one of the safer ways. Eventually they break through. They can also break through just by hopping. Now if we do get exerted, it's a good, uh, good idea either to just sit on the ground. If something comes, Hold shift while pressing the movement key to get up quickly, it really helps. We can also rest by a chair, or a couch, or a bed. And that gets rid of stamina, pretty uh, of fatigue pretty quickly. We can also sit on the ground. This progress bar is always eluding me a little bit. It doesn't have to go all the way. And you might think, why are you still sitting? Your fatigue symbol has gone away. That fatigue symbol only shows up when you're 50% uh, fatigued. So you might not know exactly how fatigued you are. Alright. Oh. So earlier I was a little confused about what is the little lightning symbol. It's a photography store. It doesn't have too much interesting, but it's it's a fun little detail, a bit of world building. So here we can get VHSs. Those will get you XP, just like television shows. That's really awesome. This is probably f some nutrition. I guess some probably a food market or something, a little food market. Here we have a restaurant. There we have a liquor store. The booze can help you with depression, with panic, with anxiety. It's uh, a bottle of bourbon has 1500 calories, so you could just drink two bottles before bedtime and you should be filled up. And uh, so yeah, bo booze definitely has a couple purposes. You can also use booze or just gasoline bottles to uh, make a Molotov cocktail. It's spicy though. We'll probably get to that, but don't necessarily recommend it. Fire, fire will get you killed. <laughs> But I'm gonna wrap it up here. I'm gonna save. I'm gonna come back to this. I um, I think it will be fun to do a proper series on this. At least get through, you know, the first couple of weeks. Uh, and, you know, we'll keep going as long as people like it. But thank you all so much for watching. Please let me know if this was in any way helpful. If uh, if there's some, some things you want to know. Specific tips, tricks, mechanics. I'm always happy to uh, help people out. I really enjoy teaching people about this game, about the little hidden mechanics, the little inner workings of this kind of stuff. Really <laughs> interesting to me how this game works. But yeah, thank you so much for watching. I hope I'll see you very soon. Bye-bye.